I think your first question is what everybody likes to ask you on your IG, right? Oh, Lord. Do you have a Tabo Basta in your life? Oh, my God. The first, guys, how is this the first question? Would you risk it all? The first question is, <laughs> do I have a Tabo Besta in my life? Someone you'd risk it all for. A Tabo Besta in my life? Um, the answer is, I don't know. Is it undefined? Yeah. Yeah. Label line with the podcast, uh, teach you lesson cause I got okay. class. Label line with the impact, right. you be lying, that's a real Ooh. fact. Come let me teach you a lesson, yeah. come let me teach you a lesson. Label line with the tweets, yeah. follow me back to my name. Hey Lion Tribe, welcome to the Lebu Lion Show Season 5. And as you can see, we're doing things a little bit differently. You can see by the background, the way I'm dressed, the t-shirt, the t-shirt, the t-shirt I'm wearing, and so much more. I can't wait for us to get into this new season. It's going to be completely different to what we've been doing. For those of you who are new to our tribe, I'm Lebu Lion, known as the voice of marketing for many reasons that you're going to see as we grow this page and have fun having conversations right so we're going to be touching on marketing we're going to be touching on pop culture we're going to be touching on motivation and a lot of things that I think have been common threads in the content that I've been sharing online for the past I think five to six years I've been in this game for long and this session today is going to be about getting to know me and for me to get to know you so I can't wait but before we do that we have to go through some housekeeping rules because you you know that nothing good ever happens if there's no structure and we don't agree even on my ig lives we have something called the head boy and head girl of the session and these are people who just come with the best comments you know who really rally the tribe and get the ideas flowing like the water <laughs> i had to do that because you guys you know i'm on social media so all the cool things i know about and the trends and that kind of thing so don't forget that when we're on this channel we speak to each other respectfully, right? No one's at war with anyone. I'm open to everyone's opinion because no one is right, right? The world is only as honest and as truthful as your lived experience and your perspective. So what Lebu sees is not what you see. What you see is not what somebody else sees. So let's be kind to one another when we are engaging in these heated conversations so that we can actually grow this tribe in a healthy and positive way way second thing is we share our content here on this channel so share this podcast everywhere on your twitter on your tiktok on your instagram with your mother with your friend whoever needs to hear it share it with them let us grow this community and let's share real valuable gems unlike some of the stuff that's online I said it, I'm being shady, but let's be honest, there isn't a lot of quality content out there. And this channel is going to try break that stereotype that we have of the kind of content that exists about the African continent and African creators. So you can tag me at labelline underscore SA literally on every single platform, or you can tag at the Label Lion Show also on TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram, even LinkedIn, we have a page. So we are everywhere and we're having courageous conversations and and unpacking what our country and the world looks like, as well as how marketing fits into our businesses, our lives, and in everything that we do. So I cannot wait. Don't forget to tag us at Label Lion underscore SA or at the Label Lion Show. And trust me, we will repost you. We'll have the conversations. It's all about connecting. So why am I in this dark room instead of in a posh hotel like I usually do or in our previous set with a pink background? Look, I think after COVID, a lot of us had to rethink how we want to exist in the world, right? And we had to really ask ourselves, who am I? What do I actually want to do? Who do I actually want to talk to? And contrary to popular belief, a lot of people like to think that if somebody seems successful or they seem like they've got their stuff together, that they know exactly what they're doing and they've just got this amazing plan and everything is going to work out. But that's not how life works. And one of the things that I'm committed to as a person who knows that she's a personal brand, who influences people, is in being honest about my journey. So you guys have seen, those who've been with me since, since the beginning, you've seen me start the podcast, then stop. Uh, create YouTube videos and then stop. 
of everything that I do, I find YouTube to be the most challenging. The showing up with the cameras, the showing up, um, you know, with the content every single week. I found that the most challenging, even though I've got so much content, even though I'm not afraid to speak in front of the camera. It was that sense of wanting to be perfect in everything that I do, because in so many things I have control. So it's easy for me to come across polished because it's easy for me to control the things. But with the YouTube aspect, I need a team. And any one of you who are running a business, who have employees, who have teams working with you, you know how hard it is to find the right team that you click with, that you can make ma magic with consistently over time, right? And those of you who are my female entrepreneurs, you know how much harder that is as well on the African continent because we've got our cultures and we've got patriarchy and all these things that make it very hard for young men and older men and even women to work with another woman and see her leadership as something credible that they need to 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 rally against and actually help support you know um so i think for me creating content for youtube has been my greatest challenge and every season i try to reinvent what i'm showing you because i'm really trying to get to the point where I can show you exactly what I want to show you and what I think is true to Lebo Lion at her core. The woman, the person, the business person, the friend, the speaker, the entrepreneur, the many things, right? I want to be able to show you guys that kind of thing in the most authentic way possible without worrying about brand deals, without worrying about uh, what somebody else in some office is going to think about me. The pressure is deep for all of us, no matter how successful you are or how you think you've just started we all have the same pressures the same imposter syndrome so for me that's what it's been and yeah now we're here we're trying again because you never give up you just keep rising it does not matter if you stop the point is to get back up and keep going and I'm showing you guys that in real time I'm not just standing on a stage saying when you fall get back up I'm literally getting back up every single time and before we go into our conversations I think it's only fair that I introduce myself to our audience because we do have new community members on the Lion Tribe and on the Lebo Lion Show and they need to know who they're speaking with and who they're engaging with so I am Lebo Lion Lion. I've been Lebo Lion the brand for the past five to six years, I think. And um, I'm a speaker, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a podcaster, I'm an author, and I'm a marketing and business educator, not a motivational speaker. Please, I am not a motivational speaker. <laughs> not everyone who speaks is a motivational speaker. So please tell your friends, tell everyone, of course, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I can motivate people if the occasion calls for it. And I got into this game through my podcast, actually. Five years ago, six years ago, the podcast was not called The Label Lion Show. It was called Lessons with Lion. And I started it with two other guys who are also doing really big podcasts at the moment. I won't mention their names because we've since gone our separate ways. But it was called Lessons with Lion. And the point of creating that podcast was to democratize access to information for entrepreneurs and people who want to build brands and be successful in their careers. I felt like I had the privilege of having access to so many rooms and so much experience that I knew that the average black, talented, young person didn't have access to. So I started the podcast to be able to give people the marketing and business and career resources that they might not have access to until they get to certain levels in corporate or their job or wherever they are. And that's what was called Lessons with Lion because I was teaching people lessons. And the significant thing about this podcast is the fact that I was the first woman to be, African woman, to be on the iTunes Top 100 charts. And a lot of people don't know this about me, which is so funny. But that's actually why I was the first one to monetize her podcast back in the day before people were taking videos of their podcast and calling it podcast when it's actually a vlogcast. I actually did OG podcasting audio and corporates called me from my second podcast to say, do you want to write a book? Do you want to monetize? How can we put money into your podcast? So even though some people might not know about the podcast, my podcast has been a commercially viable entity for the past four and a half years of its existence I think uh, is it four and a half if I started five years ago or five and a half if I started six years ago because I can't remember right now uh, but we've been making money through the podcast since then 
And obviously, podcasting has evolved. And so you're seeing people like your favorite peep chillers or whatever, and they do the video situation. And now we also have to evolve and add video to how we do podcasting because times have changed and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's also why so many people have kind of rallied behind me and said, we like this girl. We like what she's about because I was able to share marketing information that helped them change their companies. I mean, I have countless emails of people saying uh, because of this lesson you shared on this podcast I was able to get three international clients or I was about to shut down my business but because of the lessons you shared we're able to open it now sustainably you know so it wasn't a play play podcast it literally is a free marketing and business handbook if you go to season one and two and you just listen to that thing Right down the no I literally give you step by step. Go back there. The lessons are still applicable now. How to start your business. How to market your business. How to market your business online. How to sell to prospects internationally and locally. I do all of that stuff. And because we want to evolve as well as a community and a podcast, we changed our name to The Label Lion Show. And now we're adding pop culture. Now we're adding interviews with people. Now we're adding a bit of motivation. Because I think that it's important for us to have a relationship that's based on more than just the work, right? Because we are people and we are brands. And brands are bigger than, and, and more dimensional, multidimensional than just one thing. So that's what we're going to be doing on this page. But I'll still be sharing a lot of marketing and entrepreneurship resources on my other platforms, my LinkedIn, my TikTok especially and sometimes on my Instagram and my Twitter so look out for those platforms if you are an entrepreneur or a person who's building a personal brand or who has a business and you want to improve your marketing or just how you run the business in general awesome I hope that allows you to get to know me uh, and you'll see more stuff man I'll be posting a lot of shorts go follow me on my other platforms you'll see a lot more about me than you are able to see on let's say YouTube or just on a couple at a couple of interviews that I'm at and this year I want to announce we'll be doing master classes live in person I know some of you have been crying about this for the past three years I'm, I've I've caved we are doing master classes and I will share the gig guide I think in the next six weeks on my Instagram, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter. So look out for that. We will make it very small sessions because I want to be able to look at each and every person's business. So we, I think, maximum 50, 50 people per session. So look out for that. Save your coins. Let's do the things. And in the next couple of episodes, I'll also share my book with you. And we'll talk about that and how you can take part in the Audacity community because that's also something that's pretty cool and it's growing really, really big. So we're done with all of the admin. Now you know who I am. You love me because I love you. And we're, we're going to be going down this journey together. And I've decided that we're going to do a Q&A style session. Uh, my team is in the back. They're watching me like this. <laughs> Looking very serious. Uh, but I've asked them to almost simulate an audience for me and ask me the questions that I get asked quite often online about who I am, what I do, and why I am the way that I am. So let's get into this. This is going to be very funny. I've never, ever done a session like this. But let's do it. Team, Arabuing, let's speak. What's my first question? <laughs> I think your first question is what everybody likes to ask you on your IG, right? Oh, Lord. Do you have a Tabo Besta in your life? Oh, my God. The first, guys, how is, how is this the first question? Would you risk it all? The first question is, <laughs> do I have a Tabo Besta in my life? Someone you'd risk it all for. A Tabo Besta in my life? Um, the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it undefined? He's... Uh, Apparently, somebody was asking me if it's undefined. Well, you know, I just think from everything we've seen, guys, Dr. Nandi Pa, everything we see on many people's stories, dating in South Africa is an extreme sport. The streets are rough. It doesn't matter who you are. That thing is hard. Um, so I feel like, you know, I'd rather focus on my work and just being happy than um jolo. Uh, do men approach me all the time? Do I say yes to some dates? Yeah, sure. But is there a Ubaba Wesakaya? No. <laughs> there isn't that. I just think it's too stressful. I do have a, maybe a more serious. Okay, you know, apparently I'm getting a serious question. Uh, to, to that whole thing is to say entrepreneurship is not easy. Mm. Relationships mm -hmm. are not easy. Um, you've already said it's not easy, but mm -hmm. like when you're dating, how do you date 
uh, how do you what's the word I'm looking for? Balance. Not balance. Filter but out the right people. Something like that. Like yeah. how do you communicate to the person that you are about to be with to say, Hey, listen, I know you expect me to literally be worshipping the ground that you walk yeah. on, but I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm busy. laughs> <I'm busy. laughs> I, we will we'll be intentional about spending time together, but being with me it's not going to be because that's the that's yeah. about reality. Yeah. If if you are someone who's high profile entrepreneurship, male or female, yes, right. The reality is, if you're going to be dating or be in a relationship, your person needs to understand that. Yeah. There's a cost. You are where you are because I'm doing all mm. these things. I'm keeping irregular hours. I've got yeah. Uh, you know all that. How do you navigate that? That's that's a good question. So, do you mind if I say your name? Because I said your name already. Yeah. Uh, so Mudi was asking me if how do I communicate the fact that I am an entrepreneur and that because of that there are certain um, things that my partner should not expect of me or they should be aware of because of my career. That's a good question. I spend a lot of time with female entrepreneurs, other female entrepreneurs and creators who are doing very well. So they have their own money, they have their own places, you know, we're good. And I think that's their greatest challenge, being able to communicate to that person, this is what I do, so don't expect me to be a typical, you know, wife or girlfriend or whatever. Um, and I think for me, it's a sense of, I don't, I used, when I was younger, I used to think that every time you want something from a partner, you have to tell them, right? And if you tell someone, they're going to behave how you want or they're going to give you what you want. And now that I'm a little bit older, I'm learning that, you, you both have to just observe each other's lives. And you can both decide if you want to be in each other's lives with what you see or if you don't want to be in each other's lives. So I won't say to a man, for example, I know this is a very popular conversation, a, a man must give me an allowance, you know, whatever. I will never ask a guy for an allowance. But do I want a man who's a financial provider? Yes. So I will observe his actions. If you go on a date and you're not paying for the dinner, I'm probably never going to go on a date with you again. Because for me, it's already showing that you're not a natural giver and provider. And it's a small thing. It's dinner. Yes, I can pay for it. But in the dynamic I want, I want a man who will pay for dinner. Um, and it's not to say guys who don't pay for dinner are bad or they're not great. No, I'm saying what I want is that. Therefore, when I seek a relationship, I look for the actions that show me that this person is what I want. It's the same with the entrepreneurship thing. I mean, I've met guys who... Uh, we'll go on a dinner date. It's very nice. And they'll see what I'm doing. Maybe they'll see my WhatsApp status or whatever. They'll say, oh, you have a book. Then they'll buy 10 copies. For me, that's like, oh, this is someone who'd support my hustle. Cool. You know, it's just those small little things. I don't have to say buy my book. If he, I don't expect a guy to buy my book. But it's just, oh, he he's really invested in what I'm doing so much that he wants to put his own money to it but by buying a book or um, he's going to recommend people to consult with me because he really believes in what I'm doing. That's how I find partners. I, I don't tell people what I'm about anymore. I just observe them. They observe me. And then we decide, should we move forward or should we just not go any further? And I think when you do that, it becomes harder to have a partner because you're sifting through the mess, right? And that takes long. But when you're not sifting through mess, when you say anyone can date me, then it's easy to have a boyfriend every, single, every other day. But when you're really looking for real connections, then you're not probably going to find your ideal partner in the first 50 dates that you go on. Uh, but it's nice to explore, explore with people. So I just, I just observe. I, I behave authentically to myself and I observe how they react to that and how they move around me, essentially. Yeah. Have you had to, like, uh, dumb it down? Like, you know, the, the things that you've achieved, like when you're sitting, it doesn't matter in a date or like in a boardroom, because you know how sometimes us men can yeah. be sensitive sometimes. Oh. Ooh, a, it's a man saying us <laughs> men can be sensitive. So don't call me out and say Lebu hates men. He said, you know, us men can be sensitive. So Bang. have you had to be... <laughs> At least they don't see me. They don't have to come after me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you had to be like in a situation where you have to dumb it down so that the next dude like feels uh, good about themselves? And then how... Like, is it, is it wise to do that? Do you it's think women, yeah, do, or women should just outright say, because it might be something that they've achieved, like, uh, for themselves? Ooh, guys, you're coming with heavy questions. 
Um, have I dumbed it down? Yes. When I was young and naive and I thought, oh my goodness, if I behave exactly like myself, it's going to intimidate these people in the room and they won't want to work with me. And the truth is, yes, if you are going to be fully yourself and if you are actually quite brilliant, because if there's one thing I'm not humble about, it's the fact that I'm really great at what I do. I know I'm great at marketing. No one has to tell me. I don't need people to validate me. I know that I'm good at it and it's not something I'm going to be shy about, right? Um, but does that mean that I'm not respectful to people when I work with them? No, I'm completely respectful because I respect my craft and I respect myself, you know? And I think people get that a bit confused where if somebody's confident about what they do, they assume that you must be arrogant or have a big ego. No, it's the complete opposite. If you're confident, you're so clear about who you are that you don't feel the need to make other people feel small because you're good at what you do, right? So I'm confident that I am that kind of person and I move that way. And when I was younger, I wasn't as confident about the fact that I know what I'm doing. So I think that's why I had to dumb it down because I didn't actually know how to be genuinely humble without pretending to be humble about the thing. But now that I'm older and I'm very sure of myself, I'm just genuinely humble about it in the way that's authentic to me that makes it impossible for me to pretend. I'm not going to dumb anything down and I don't want to be in rooms where people are watering themselves down either. Because it means that we're all not showing up at our best level. So we're not going to create the best product or service or whatever, you know. So I think when it comes to dumbing yourself down or making yourself less, you're only doing yourself and the people around you a disservice. Because you're not allowing, you're not pushing each other to be your best. So you're not allowing yourself to show up in the best way for you at that moment. Which means you're not producing the best. You're not accessing the most opportunities that you could because you're not being completely yourself, right? If there are rooms that shut you out because you are being your best, then you're not meant to be in that room. You're too big for the room, right? You don't want to be in small rooms. They're claustrophobic and you don't get to grow. You only die in those kinds of spaces. So make sure you're in spaces where they're so big for the kind of person you are that when you're growing there's still room for you to keep growing there's still room for you to be even better yes lib was great i know i'm great at marketing but i honestly can be greater that's the truth i don't want to be in spaces where people keep saying oh my god you're so great you're so great. and that's it we're done oh she's so great no the world keeps moving i'm in tech and i'm in the offline space so tech changes every week <laughs> i can literally learn something new every single day there's no way i can be the best there's no such thing anymore so if you're truly excellent and great at what you do you're somebody who's constantly learning and constantly growing which means you should be in big rooms to allow you to learn and to grow so i would never ever recommend dumb it down for anybody and speaking of uh, the big rooms um very keen to understand why you've chosen not to be a corporate hustler because oh. you're very <laughs> you're very aligned with corporates but you still sit outside of them yeah um and depending on relationships with corporates i think one of the best examples i know is the lady who started candy and co yes was uh, what you call this she started it together with what's this one so bay uh, they started it together with so bay and mm -hmm. she was coming out of i think unilever at the time yeah so she was using all her corporate contacts and experience and was like okay cool i'm gonna start a business but you know through a corporate help me out you yeah know, and you know you're able to achieve scale much faster and all mm -hmm. of that stuff so yeah just a question that's a great question why did i choose entrepreneurship and playing outside of the system instead of being in corporate so i think a lot of people think i i'm i'm corporate leaning because of how i come across i went to very good schools and i'm a virgo so put those two things together you've got a person who's an over perfectionist uh you know i i always try to make things exactly how i want to see them exactly like it's it's i'm obsessed um, and so if I'm going to say I speak, I'm going to teach myself how to speak the best I can. If I'm going to sit, I'm going to have the best posture I can have for myself at the time. I'm that kind of person. If you come to my house and I say, come have lunch, trust me, I will know what your allergies are. My glasses are going to be super clean. Everything's going to look very nice. I do that whether there's a camera or no camera. That's who I am as, as label lion, right? But also at my core, I am a super 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 creative person um so i would say your people like your pharrell williams your andre 3000s people who are really unconventional and a little bit offbeat that's who i am as well and that part of me is bigger than 
the perfectionist that might seem to align with corporate. I want to be in spaces where I can scribble and someone says, that's not a scribble. That's money, <laughs> you know? But in corporate, the only things that are money are things that already exist. No one's trying to create something new. Uh, they don't have a very big appetite for risk, even though they have the budgets and the, and the environment to actually take the biggest risks, you know? And I'm a risk taker, so I don't mind saying I'll forfeit X, Y, Z to do this because I believe in two years' time it's going to do X, Y, Z for me. When I started with podcasting, I did not know anything would come out of it, but I did it anyway. And even when corporates approached me, they didn't actually understand what a podcast was. They were approaching me for me, and I said, but I'm on a podcast. Do you understand what I'm saying? So because I think that I am the kind of person who's always at the forefront of things, that's what I am. I'm always learning. I'm always trying new things, even though I don't show it on my Instagram and stuff. I, I think corporate would have limited my entrepreneurial uh, vibes and it would have also limited my creativity. Uh, you need to be in fearless environments for you to be truly creative. If you're in corporate, you're always going to hamper or like minimize your creativity because it has to fit into the corporate vision and I believe in my own vision I don't really want to believe in a corporate vision unless we are collaborating so I just corporate was never an option for me ever I think uh, and there's nothing wrong with corporate there are lots of people who are made for corporate I'm trying to build my own corporation so there'll definitely be people working for me in my corporation but I'm not meant to work in a corporate corporation I'm just the way I am and the way I think and feel does not fit that environment at all on a lighter note, mm -hmm. I know we've been throwing a bit of hard questions. Bombs. <laughs> <laughs> bombs! So if you were not doing what you're doing right now and yeah. you're being paid for something, yes. what would it be? Oh, I love this question. Ooh, so Jacob asked me if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, what would I do that I'd get paid for, right? There are two, two things. The first one would be food. I love food. I know a lot about food, guys. You cannot trick me about the food. I know a lot about food from a business perspective, from a recipe development perspective, all the, 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 the facets of the food industry. I know a lot about it. So one of my dreams actually is to own a couple of restaurants in my late 40s. That's I'm going to be a restaurateur. I'm leaving this behind and I'm going to be in the food business completely. I just think, you know, people eat every single day. Right. And food is an expression of so many things that I don't think a lot of us have tapped into yet. And there's so many opportunities, even in the fields of food experiences, recipe development, product design. And that's exciting for me as a marketer. So definitely I'd be in the food space or I'd go to the music industry because that's where I started everything. For people who don't know, I used to play the saxophone. I sing. I've written for a couple of artists who you guys know. I've been in studios with them in my early 20s. I was all about just doing music. So um, definitely love music. I would definitely like become a producer, make things, uh, write things, maybe even maybe sing on some songs, maybe take the sax out again one day. Maybe even DJ. You guys, you don't know. Maybe next year I'll be like, guys, catch me on the ones and twos. Who knows? But definitely musical food. So if maybe, um, I guess what Dave is saying is, if my piano was what, my, what it is now, would having a level line hit? I'm a piano. Yeah. Oh, I love the pianos. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't even, there's one thing in my car, every Friday I'm playing the pianos. Like I am obsessed with I'm a piano. I think it's a revolutionary genre. It is to the 2020s what Guaito was to the 90s right like it will it will go down in history as a defining genre of our youth so if you don't like i'm a piano for me it's questionable because it's like do you even understand how the youth is expressing themselves and why this music resonates with them so much what are they saying about their culture their lived experiences so for me even with brand managers like listen to this music watch the content around it and you'll be able to design campaigns that actually make sense for youth audiences uh, because you'll be able to to understand what they think life is, what they think enjoyment is, what they think love is, what they think pain is. It's all in Ama Piano. So yeah, I love the Yanos. I, I love it. I think it's game changing. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask, right? Let's say, like, for instance, you've just got shipwrecked, right? Yeah, shipwrecked. On, okay. Yeah, on, oh, a, on a weird island. <laughs> <laughs> You're alone, but all your needs are taken care of. Food, water, everything. Yeah. What are the two 
items that you take with you and why? Oh my God, I'm alone. Yeah. So I don't need a weave or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and makeup. Because <laughs> I was thinking, hey, oh my God. Uh, okay, so I've got everything I want on the shipwrecked island, um, food, water, but I can pick two other things that I take that are non-essentials. <sighs> you know, I love people, but I don't really want to spend my time connecting with people, so I would leave my phone. Um, I'd take a case of books because I love to read. Reading for me is like traveling. You just get to escape to another world. You learn so much. It enriches you and you come out a better person. And it's also, it like, it just makes my creative juices flow. So I really love reading. And then I think I would take um, something that allows me to play music. Those are the two things. I love me. I cannot go a day without music. I listen to music every single day. There needs to be something playing for me. Music inspires me. Music grounds me. Music excites me. It's just a part of my life. I need a soundtrack every single day. Like today I was jamming old school love songs. <laughs> like <laughs> like your, your Monica, So Gone, where she's talking about a cheating man. Mm, mm, mm. And I was also playing <laughs> Jagged Edge, Let's Get Married. If you guys don't know these songs, you're too young for me. The storyline though, on those songs though. Eh? <laughs> yeah, the storyline. <laughs> Let's Get Married, Jagged Edge. Some hey. guy's cheating on his wife, but now, oh, his girlfriend. But now he's like, he wants to be serious. Let's get married. I don't want to play in the streets. And then So Gone is about a woman who's saying, but you don't pay attention to me. Like, you're always in the streets. I don't know why those were the soundtracks of my <laughs> day today, but they were. I listened to them on repeat. I might have even shaded on my Instagram <laughs> uh, but yes music and books definitely I think maybe le let's go back a bit for someone who doesn't know why lion oh that's yeah, the million dollar question I, I, was, I was also curious about that <laughs> why label lion yeah, yeah. listen I was thinking maybe I should do something on Patreon and just have a, a session of why is my name label lion because so many people ask me I think I could make money just from answering that question <laughs> a lot of people say why did you choose the name label lion for those of you who don't know label lion is not my real name it is not on my ID birth certificate. No, it's the it's like Sasha Fierce, right? It's it's an alter ego that I created for myself for many reasons that I will not share in this podcast. But if you keep watching our videos and you engage with our content, I will have a special session just to talk about this name because it's actually very funny and very shady how I got to this name. In the street. In the street. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to... I'm a piano. Yeah. Uh, do you think the Ama Piano guys are doing enough to own their story? Ooh. And the reason I say that is because, um, you know, producer types, artists, they're creatives, right? They, if you look at guys like Maporisa, Kabsa, those guys are studio rats. They just want to sit and create, play, you know. Mm. Uh, this thing of sitting on podcasts and going out on press tours, etc. They don't, they do do it, but they appear to enjoy the creativity aspect more. Uh, but the danger with that is the fact that if, you know, if you don't have the leaders of the movement telling the story, then you, what you call this, you're a danger that people outside of the movement are the ones that are going to tell, tell the story, you know, on your, uh, on your behalf. So... Just from what you've seen, for me, I would say that uh, I think Major League has done well in terms oh. of at least spreading this, uh, what you call this, the message across the world about I'm a piano in the same way that Black Coffee has spread the story about SA House. And, yeah, but it was just a question about um, are the I'm a piano guys doing enough to own that story? Because you're a marketing person. Yes. So I'm sure this is sort of right up, up my alley. alley. Yeah. Uh, are the Amapiano guys doing enough to own their story as Amapiano creators, etc.? That's a great question. And it's so multifaceted, right? Because there are many layers to this conversation about artists and creative owning the story about what they do. And when you asked me that question, it, it reminded me of a phrase that I like to use when I do keynotes. And that is, until the lion learns how to tell its own story, the hunter will always be the hero. Right. 
So it's basically talking about the power and the necessity of you telling the story of the thing that you create, of the thing that puts money and food on your table, the, the industry that nurtures you. You should be part and parcel of telling the story about it so that it serves you as the creator and anybody else in that industry who benefits from it. So storytelling is very, very important. I think the question then becomes, other than the people who actually create the content, who else should be telling the story, right? I've seen in the few years that I've done business that if you ask people to do things they're not good at, they won't be able to do that thing very well. So a producer supposed to produce, is he supposed to also create a documentary about the music he's producing? I'm not sure. Is he the best person to tell the story? I'm not sure. Perhaps his part in ten telling the story is in creating the music, right? And then who else is supposed to then communicate that story in other rooms where people will understand it in a different way? And I think that's where marketers come in. And that's why I always say to people, you need to have a marketer on your team. That's the storyteller of your brand. That's the storyteller of the things that you do. Every move movement should have a group of marketers who are saying, we are going to brand this thing. We are going to tell the story. We are going to make sure that it is consumed and done the right way. Because I don't expect my Mapodisa to be sitting in a boardroom telling people about the commercial value of Amapiano. You know, the way that I would describe it. But I also can't go into a studio and produce a beat the way that he can. So I think it's all about us collaborating with one another in the industry and saying who's responsible for what in the storytelling. Maybe somebody's actually creating the content of the story, then somebody else is telling and explaining. Um, and I'd love to see more marketers actually taking the role of being storytellers for the industries that they that they serve because we are the best people to tell those stories. Like I said to you, I'm a piano is to the 2020s what Guaito was to the 90s. And trust me, I can sit for an hour just as somebody who's listened and done a bit of research on Amapiano and tell you about its social relevance for now, for the digital age, and um, for how Africa is going to collaborate with the rest of the world and what we're going to look like as leaders in the next five years. I can do that now, sitting here like this. And many marketers can. I'm not the only one. Uh, so I think marketers should be telling more stories of the things that they observe because we are the ones who know how to convert content or anything else into commercial value and something that is actually used in spaces in in a valuable way i hope that answered your question yeah Ooh, this is a fire uh. the guys are coming in here <laughs> what is your like your go-to pickup item could be comfort yeah. food like you like if you're feeling down and you're like I'm a pick me down, up. Huh? And you, clima is the theme of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you like you, you need some motivation. Do you read a book? Do you listen to someone? Yeah. Do you eat like comfort food? Yeah. Like how do you get over that slump? How do I get over my slump? I think it would be very reckless for me not to contextualize the things that I say. And I'm saying this because on another podcast I was on, somebody called me a scammer because I contextualized something before I answered the question. But guys, context is king. If I answer something without giving you context, you won't actually understand why I'm saying it the way I'm saying it. And then you can also come up with your own ideas of the meaning. So context creates meaning. Uh, with the question that I was asked, how do I deal with a slump, blah, blah, blah. Time. Um, a lot of the time you'll see these entrepreneur people, whatever, well-known people just being like, yeah, no, I do this. And I, they just seem like heroes. No one is a hero. OK, we learn over time how to handle things better because we're consistently trying to improve ourselves. So Lebo Lion at 25 is not who I am now. At 25, I probably would have wanted to like, I'm going to you know, have a few words with you and be very angry, you know, and just say, oh my God, the world is against me. Why is this happening when I've tried so hard to be great? And I'm that was me then. But me now, who's had to build things and take on financial risks and has a bigger brand, says, before you respond, breathe and think about what you're about to say. If you have nothing nice to say, genuinely, walk out the room Take, take a breather. Just don't say anything. <laughs> you know, I do a lot of not saying anything, even though, like I was saying, my brand is in Gas Grima. 
because I'm annoyed about many things and people just, oh, it's frustrating. But I have to have composure because I have an end game and it's bigger than the moment, right? Uh, in the past, I'd want to like go out with my friends, go to parties, you know, drink, you know, just get rid of the stress of life. But now I'm like, I'm an adult actually and the stress is still there if all I'm doing is avoiding it. <laughs> so I have to confront it. Uh, so what I would do is, during the week, even though I love listening to music, I'll probably only listen to music after 4 p.m. Before that, I'm only listening to meditation, motivation, and business stuff. And it mustn't overwhelm me. If I can feel stress in my neck, I don't listen. I listen to something else. So I'm constantly trying to incubate myself to make sure that I have a very positive uh, and calm environment around me that breeds a, a very consistently mature mindset. Uh, so if someone's going to come at me, I'm not going to scream. I'm going to calm down, tell myself whatever affirmation I've heard and then maybe respond, you know. So now I literally, I'll listen to a, a podcast a, with affirmations or I'll take a walk or I'll take a nap. Um, and then afterwards, if I still feel like I'm too angry, I distance myself from the situation until I think I'm ready to confront it. And also, I find that the older you get, if you're really trying to improve yourself, you start to learn how to create boundaries. Because I don't think a lot of us have boundaries. Um, and as we get older, we, we start to learn the value of boundaries. If you want to keep the money that you make and you want to keep the business that you're building, you're going to have to have boundaries. Um, and in, in learning how to have boundaries, I'm more able to say I'm not willing to participate in something. Or I'm more willing to actually confront somebody and not feel like I'm a bad person or that I'm doing the wrong thing. You know, and, and not have to run away to eat food or go out with my friends. No, I don't do that. I only go out for, for pleasure. If I'm happy and something good has happened, I'll go out and have drinks with my friends. If I'm going to meet my best friend and we have, we're connecting, we'll go have some comfort food. But I don't hide behind things anymore. I confront them, I affirm myself, or I take a break and then go back to it. Yeah, it's not glamorous, but that's what I do. Yeah, I just want to ask, right? So I'm going to use myself, right? Yeah. Just like a quick case study. So I work for this particular company. Yeah. It's a production company. I get to work with people like you and whatever, whatever. But now, since I work for the company, I can't use the content for my personal brand. Yes. Right? So, but I really need it. <laughs> you know? So how do I now angle that for it not to be ugly if you get what i'm saying yeah you know yeah how do i now build a brand around that that's a great question so what a lot of people don't understand and i'm glad you understand this is that if you work for somebody whatever you create for them that they're paying for is not yours it's theirs you cannot take a client's content clients anything and use it as if it's your own but what you can do is build a personal brand within the company that you work with so that they are happy to let you use the content you've created for them as something that amplifies your value. So a, a great way to show this is to say, let's say you work at X Bank, right? And you're the content creator for X Bank. So you have an Instagram page and you say, leading content creator at X Bank. And when the bank sees that you're resharing the stuff that you've asked permission to reshare, they'll say they'll see that you're actually sharing it within the context of their organization as well. So you're not stealing content anymore. You're all kind of amplifying more of the stuff that they've done for them um, because you, you, you are creating within the banner of the brand. And the reason why that's important is because when somebody else is watching, whether we like it or not, they're going to think that X Bank also made you great. X Bank needs that kind of validation because they are paying you. Uh, so if you want to use the things that you've already done in a company and you're still working for the company, you do have to state in your social media, wherever you're going to use it, that you're doing it for that company and that you are about that company, you're the brand ambassador for that company in that regard. Uh, and guys, don't forget to ask for permission. Please ask your bosses or whoever for permission. Don't just do it, but show them. Say, look, I'm, I've got a page. I've put uh, whatever for X Bank. Is that okay? And I'm not going to post anything personal. This page is purely for business. It's for me to showcase how cool it is to be a content creator at this organization, right? Then they'll let you get away with, with doing that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> between Maya Angelou ah. and Oprah. Ah. <laughs> Who would you want to have as a co-host oh, and no. one as a guest?
Wow. My two best friends that don't know they're my best friends. <laughs> Oprah and my Angelo. <laughs> uh, definitely co-host Oprah and guests Maya Angelo. She's got way too much knowledge to share, right? Uma Angelo. And I love her for being a composed black woman. And I know that statement is going to sound a little bit shady, but it's not. What I mean by that is... If you check her story, she's faced so much adversity. I mean, they were there in the times when racism was the norm and it was never going to end, right? And I just love how she was saying, despite what the oppressor wants to, how the oppressor wants to characterize us, we can still create our own narratives and be exactly who we want to be. I can be a composed black lady if I want to be. I can be a creative, you know, a crazy lady if I want to be. There are no limits to what I can be just because the system says I shouldn't be that way. And Maya Angelou portrays that really well. If you study her career, she used to be a dancer. She used to be many things um, before she was this old lady that we saw with all that wisdom. So I would definitely interview her. You good? Yeah, okay. We're good. Now, One last question. One last question. Would you be an actress? Ha! Ah, but so would I be an actress? Do you guys really want to know that about me? No, I don't think I'd be an actress. <laughs> I've never been that good at acting. Um, I think it's the trauma from one of my childhood plays that I was in. And they laughed at me because I couldn't roar. Hint, hint. It's part of the li Little Lion story. Um, but yeah, so I know acting is not my, my thing. Look, I'm not saying producers shouldn't call me, uh, but I'm just saying that, uh, it's not on, at the forefront of what I want to do. I'm more of a voice person. One of the reasons why I am the voice of marketing is not, I'm not saying I'm an expert, the best in South Africa. I'm saying I'm the voice. I'm the channel people use, the audio channel people use to communicate things about marketing in our country. That's why I am the voice of marketing. Um, so I, I believe in using my voice. I love using my voice to do things, to communicate, to connect with people, to do everything. So I'd rather be more on the audio, radio side of things than acting in front of camera. Awesome. So I think we've done a very heavy and extensive Q&A session. And funnily enough, this is what happens at a lot of the events that I speak at. So I'll do my keynote and then I'll do like a Q&A session with the audience. And the Q&A session always runs over time because people have so many questions to ask. So let's not stop this conversation here. Ask me questions in the comments section and I will literally take those questions and answer them biggie by biggie, one by one in the different episodes that we'll be doing. Right? Because this is a community, like I said, and we want to have conversations. But don't forget the most important thing is to like to share to subscribe at the label lion show at label lion underscore sa on all social media platforms let's grow this community let's have these conversations and i hope that from our q a session you were able to see how important it is to have a life story guys and we'll go into that just now in our motivation session. But we have to close off this part where I'm saying thank you for watching our Q&A session. Please communicate with me in the comment section below. Be nice to each other. Let's grow this community. You can find me on every single social media platform at Label Lion SA. So to end of the podcast, what we'll be doing in the future is having something called motivation with Label Lion. Right? It's a small segment at the end because I want us to leave feeling inspired, feeling uplifted, feeling like like we've got an extra bit of knowledge in our arsenal that will help us tackle the day. And I think for today, it came to me as I was speaking to you guys. I think my motivation for you with this day is keep it real. Be authentic. There is so much power in being yourself and sharing your story just as it is. I know with social media, there's a lot of pressure to come across as perfect, to come across as something that you're not, but don't allow that to be your story. You know, you want to make sure that you're connecting with the right people because the right people open the right doors for you. The right people bring the right validation into your life and the right people help you grow in the right way that for you. So be yourself. Don't worry what other people are going to say. Make decisions, business or not, that are based on what feels authentically true to you. Look at people like me. We are a living example of being authentic to ourselves. If I really wanted 
the regular degular, you know, validation and whatever from the industry. I could have easily sat here in a suit and spoken in a certain way. I could easily show you all the things I'm doing, tell you how much money I've made. But I'm not that kind of person and I refuse to be. And it's okay if that means I'm going to grow a little slower or have to go in different directions. That is fine for me. It it helps me preserve, preserve my own inter- integrity. It allows me to show up the way that I want to. So guys, be authentic. It's not just a catchphrase. It's a real thing. The more authentic you are in life the better your life experiences are okay my darlings thank you for tuning in i'll see you on another episode of the level lion youtube page i guess that's what we're gonna call it for now and yeah tribe you represent me you represent me we represent each other let's be lions out there it's a jungle right move like a lion be strategic be cool be kind and always think before you speak and think before you act Tag us at labelline underscore SA and at the Label Lion Show. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, mother, brother, whoever. Let's grow this community. Until next time, peace out. Come let me teach you a lesson. Come let me teach you a lesson. Label Lion with the tweets. Follow me back to my nest. Label Lion with the podcast. Teach you lesson because I got class. Label Lion with the impact. To be live, that's the